What's up guys, it's Nick2. I've been streaming a ton lately over on Twitch. I would love to see more of you guys around if you're interested. Feel free to come by and ask me questions. But lately I've been getting asked in my chat constantly, what am I supposed to do once I've unlocked World Tier 3? Now that I've completed the campaign and I'm in the end game, what am I supposed to do? You know, all at once you gain access to all of these things. It's a little bit, you know, overwhelming and it's a bit ambiguous. Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Obviously, the goal seems to be I want to level up quickly, but there's a lot of different things that I can do. And, you know, I want to be efficient, right? So what am I supposed to do? I've gotten to level 70. The game's been out for like, you know, a little less than two days now. I've been playing a ton and I just want to make a pretty quick video just going over what are some efficient things that you want to do? What is your primary goal in terms of, you know, being in world tier three and what are some ways to just optimize spending your time? So your primary goal now that you're in tier three is to get out of tier three and get into tier four. The way that you get into tier four is just like the way that you entered tier three was by completing the capstone dungeon immediately after completing the campaign. If you haven't yet completed the capstone dungeon after doing the campaign, that's your primary goal. You don't have to wait till level 50 to do that. You can do that way under leveled. So the second that you complete the campaign, try to just get a really good build and then boom, instantly do the capstone dungeon. I was able to do it at like level 42 on my rogue. There's a video on that if you want to watch it, but it's pretty easy. Uh, just try to focus on getting some gear. Once you have world tier three unlocked, you want to basically do the exact same thing that you did. And you can do this dungeon way under leveled as well. I did it at level 61 on my rogue. I'll probably make a video on that too. The reason that you want to get to torment four is because now you start getting ancestral items and that's just going to make your character more powerful and things are more difficult but you also get 200 percent increased xp so the ultimate goal is to get to level 100 and to get the best gear in the game which is going to be in tier in torment 4 so now that we're in tier 3 how can we efficiently spend our time and increase our power so that we can as quickly as possible get to torment 4. you gain access to sacred items the second that you get into tier 3. these items are essentially the same as normal ones they just drop as sacred and they have a higher roll range so Generally speaking, they'll be 20 to 30% stronger. That's just a ballpark estimate than normal items. So the second that you get into tier three, one of the first things that you want to do is replace your weapons with sacred weapons. I have ancestral ones, but same thing goes. You want to replace them with sacred because it, they will have higher DPS and all of your skills scale off of how much damage these have. So that is instantly going to be a massive damage increase. Don't spend like insane materials upgrading these or like imprinting an aspect on them if they don't have good stats because it's going to be really expensive to imprint aspect on them. But the amount of damage that you get from just equipping it is going to be a massive power spike. That's the first thing that you want to do. But how do I actually want to start getting these items? Now that you're in tier three, you have access to nightmare sigils via nightmare dungeons. L tides can appear across the map and there's some champion mobs, whatever, and monsters give you extra XP. My recording software exploded, so I have to record this again, but basically, the second that you get here, the first thing that you want to do is start unlocking all of your renown. The reason that you care about this is because you want to get this skill point as fast as possible for all of the different zones. By unlocking your renown, you'll just be getting a lot of XP as well, so the first thing that you want to do, or that I would recommend, is doing strongholds because these are going to give you 100 renown each, so it's pretty easy to start getting here. If you're less lazy than I am, you could get all the waypoints all at once, and then you could even start unlocking the you know the full renown by doing literally everything here. It'll take you quite a while. You could get all the altars, etc., because you're gonna have to do it anyways eventually. So might as well get it out of the way. But if you just want to like get to torment four as fast as humanly possible, first thing that you want to do is simply just do all the strongholds to get all the skill points, right? Outside of that, a good way of getting renown is by doing some of the side dungeons. Side quests are certainly more efficient than doing side dungeons, but doing dungeons is the best way to actually get XP. And our primary goal is to you know, get leveled up as fast as possible. So when it comes to doing some of these side dungeons, while it isn't particularly the most efficient thing in the world, it is something that you want to do anyways. Um, you can actually take advantage of the Tree of Whispers to do side dungeons that are going to give you grim favors. What the Tree of Whispers does is basically the second that you unlock World Tier 3, you gain access to this. The first thing that it tells you to do, pretty much if you just do anything that is in like these zones here, it'll give you some grim favors. Doing a dungeon gives you five. Once you get 10 of these, you turn it in, you get like a little cache it's going to give you some nice elixirs it'll give you glyphs every once in a while for your paragon board which you shouldn't care too much about at this point but it also gives you gear and a small boost of xp so i was doing dungeons that i haven't yet completed you can tell which one you haven't completed if it says rewarded on first completion like this one it doesn't have anything because i've already done it but this one right here would be a really good one that i would just okay i'm going to teleport right here which is a good reason to get all your waypoints early so you can do this pretty quickly but i teleport right here i do this gives me five grim favors i get 30 renown by doing it and then i do two of those and boom i have enough to turn in here and i get a lot of extra xp that is something that i was doing 
but if you also just want renown one of the more efficient ways to get it is by just unlocking all of the uh, waypoints here and then you just do some side quests that are usually pretty fast just to get the scope point though if you want to get all the rest of it i don't really know the most efficient thing to do but this is just for trying to get some xp while also getting some of the renown that you care about after you get the renown your primary goal at this point should be to just get as much xp as possible while also improving upon your build when it comes to your build um, and just gear in general don't equip anything or don't bother upgrading or putting aspects or anything on something that is not a sacred item sacred items like i mentioned earlier are just going to be way more powerful so the most important thing is getting a lot of those sacred items that have roles that you want and then putting aspects on those ones putting aspects on things very early on is going to be really expensive you're not going to have the materials for it so make sure that you're looting literally everything that you can always going back to town selling items that are bad or always salvaging legendary items if you don't have any materials make sure you're salvaging i would say on average salvage like 80 percent of your items and 20 percent of them you want to sell never sell a legendary item need some gold if you want to be upgrading your gear putting sockets into your gear putting legendaries on etc and that's really important because how powerful you are determines how quickly you're going to do a lot of the rest of the stuff here like doing dungeons doing dungeons is the fastest way to get xp which is why i think it's a good idea to just do the grim favor ones but if you want to be super turbo efficient you just want to get to world 3 4 as fast as possible you want to get a bunch of gear and just absolutely slam most efficient thing to do, I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but what I was doing and was very good was teleporting down here to Yelezna and doing Dead Man's Dredge, which is a really fast dungeon, but any dungeon is good that doesn't have an annoying boss or like an annoying, okay, I gotta run back here 20 feet, pick up this thing, run back here. It's just an absolute waste of time, right? You want to do a dungeon that has a bunch of elites all stacked up. This dungeon just has a ton of elites. You go in there, you get like half of a level, right? But when you do it, you're locked out for a minute so you can either just sit there and wait for a minute or while you're waiting for a minute you can go and do a different dungeon such as uh, bear tribe refuge by the way you could also walk out and there's often an event here but usually it'll take a little bit less than in a minute or something and a lot of time it won't be there so you'll either want to teleport up here and you can do anika's claim which is basically the same thing as dead man's dredge you could do like half of it like just to start and just farm the elites or you could just do another dungeon like I was mentioning in the downtime, or you could do Hell Tides. Hell Tides are not great for XP. They're pretty much just around the map. Here's one actually. It just looks like this, and it has a little sword on the map. Basically what this does is you go over here, you kill a bunch of mobs, and you get cinders. You turn these cinders in to open up boxes. This is not great for XP. It's really, really good for loot farming though, if you are in a group. If you're solo, it's okay for loot farming. A little bit better than dungeons because you can target farm certain items and it seems like there's a high drop chance of legendaries and even uniques from the boxes so you kill enemies you do events you get these cinders and then you turn them in for specific boxes there's boxes for specific item slots there's not very many on the map usually i would go here if i felt like i didn't have very many materials or i wanted to just upgrade certain gear but usually like it lasts for an hour but there's only like i don't know maybe six boxes probably like one here one here one here one here whatever you open all those boxes and then you're done. You don't want to sit there farming anymore because you don't benefit from the fact that you get extra loot via the boxes. The mystery boxes always give like multiple legendaries. So if there's a mystery box, always make sure to get that. Otherwise, probably just go there, open a box of like, you know, weapons if you really, really want a weapon and then just leave and then go back to farming dungeons. You might have noticed that I have not mentioned nightmare dungeons and that's because I generally just don't think they are worth it. I could certainly be wrong on this, but from my experience, they're just harder versions of normal dungeons and they don't give you that much more XP. I did some dungeons on my rogue when I was like super overpowered. If you want to see the build, link in the description, but I did some nightmare dungeons that were like way over leveled for me. So in theory, I should be getting a ton of XP and I was like blasting through them, but I just wasn't getting more XP than I would have been getting if I was just doing Dead Man's Dredge or like something else, right? I didn't really find it worth it. So I would just wait till you're in Torment for, or Tier 4 or Torment to start doing Nightmare Dungeons. One reason you could do them, like a couple of them, sorry, I'm clicking around here, is if you need a Glyph slot because you always get a new Glyph if you don't have it yet by just completing a Nightmare Dungeon. So if you get to your Paragon board and there's a Glyph you really want, like there's not, there actually is quite a lot of them, but if there's a Glyph that you need, like just do a couple Nightmare Dungeons, like exploit is super broken, right? So you want to get this, just do some Nightmare Dungeons and you'll end up getting it. But by doing the Grim Favors, you'll also get a lot of Glyphs. So it shouldn't be something that's capping you that hard. 
but ultimately I just don't think that it is worth it. But that's honestly pretty much it. I didn't want to go like super in depth into all these systems. I pretty much just wanted to answer the question of what am I supposed to do at level 50? And hopefully I did that for you guys. As a quick recap, focus on getting sacred items. Don't imprint on things that are bad because it's really expensive. Only imprint things that are really good slash upgrade them to focus on, you know, making your build and your character better. First thing that you want to do is unlock all of the renown to get all the skill points. The best way to do that is at the minimum, get all of the strongholds and all of the waypoints. Outside of that, doing side dungeons with grim favors is very good, or you could start doing some side quests because that's efficient for getting renown. Doing the dungeons that give grim favors are really good. You can just, you know, TP right there, turn those in, get a little bit of extra XP and loot. If you want to turbo nerd Omega farm loot, you can do some health tides in a group and get a lot of loot that way, but it's only going to last a little bit and they are not always active. If you want to turbo farm XP like a nerd, you want to do some sort of dungeon similar to Dead Man's Dredge. There's probably something better, but some dungeon like this, go outside, do an event, alternate between one dungeon to another dungeon. You can find multiple that you like. I actually really like Dead Man's Dredge plus Tormented Ruins, but Tormented Ruins is not as good. There's probably a dungeon that's similarly good. Just find something that's close to a waypoint so you're not wasting a lot of time traveling, and that's going to be the best way to get XP. But your goal is to just get powerful. Your goal isn't to hit level 70. Your goal is to get strong. I did the tier 4 Capsum Dungeon at level 61 or something. You only need to get to like 60 or to 65. It depends on how strong your build is. But that's why it's important to focus on your character power, not focus as much on your level. If your character power is better, you will level faster. And the faster that you get to tier 4, the faster that you're going to be leveling anyways because you get extra XP from being in tier 4. So focus on making yourself really, really strong. And if you feel like you're really strong, go try the capsule dungeon. It doesn't matter what level you are. Just go try it. If you get owned, realize, okay, I need to focus a little bit more on damage reduction. I need to go get this piece of gear that has this item on it, that has this amount of resistance, whatever. One tip. Unfortunately, I keep, I cannot get a single drop of this, but it's called Disobedience. You gain armor for how much damage you deal, whatever. This is crazy, crazy good, and it will give you so much survivability, and it will make that boss fight really easy. I'll probably make a guide on that boss fight for Rogue specifically, but until I make that, or if you're not a Rogue, just try to focus on some survivability. Something like basic skills give you damage reduction, plus this thing is crazy. If you get a better roll of this, boom, uh, that gives you so much survivability. But just try doing the caps on dungeon once, and if you get owned, realize, okay, this is what I need to prioritize. I need this much more damage. I need this much more survivability. Focus on getting that stuff gear-wise, upgrading your gear. Upgrading your gear is very inexpensive, and it gives you a lot of up, um, extra damage and stuff. If you upgrade it like the first three times, it doesn't really cost anything. So definitely make sure to do that. Emeralds are very, very good, and uh, diamonds are pretty good too to, to get resistance, and uh, skulls are good for armor bunch of random tips there at the end but hopefully i answered this question for you guys if i did please make sure to drop a like subscribe for more videos similar to this one i'll be making a ton of diablo 4 content and as long as you guys keep watching i'll keep making the videos so a like would be greatly appreciated and incentivizes me to keep doing that. Uh, also feel free to follow me over on twitch i'd love to see more of you guys around but yeah that's it for the video thank you guys for watching and of course if you have any questions leave it in the comments i might not answer it there but i'll definitely answer it if you come into my chat on twitch all right, I'll see you guys later. More videos to come. Peace.